Hi guys, my name is Mariam, but I also go by Slim, and I am married to an annoyingly handsome man, Dan, and together we have a beautiful baby girl named Irina. People are usually very curious about our dynamic in the house because I am from Tanzania, Dan is from Serbia, and people are usually very curious about how we raise a multicultural, biracial child in the States, and let me tell you, a lot is involved, whether it's language, music, food, we make sure she gets it from both sides of the world, and if you are very interested in today's video stay tuned for a lot of culture for a lot of laughter and for a lot of love enjoy i feel like this video has been a long time coming now if you don't know i am from tanzania and if you don't know where that is think of mount kilimanjaro think of zanzibar think of the maasai tribe and my husband is serbian think novak Djokovic. think Nikola Tesla. Tesla. Why did I say that so weird? And so we have a daughter, her name is Irina, and we are raising her in a very multicultural household. And I feel like a lot of you are very curious about our dynamic in our household, how we're teaching her our culture and language. And so here is the long awaited video. Now, before we continue today's video, I wanna say thank you so very much to Helix Kids for sponsoring today's video. So the Helix Kids mattress is designed by Helix Sleep and it's a premium mattress and a box designed specifically with growing kids needs and prefaces in mind. And they're guaranteed to be safe, comfortable, and they're conveniently shipped to your door. As a parent, there's one thing that I realized that there are so many options when it comes to buying things for kids, especially mattresses. And the reason why I was drawn to Helix Kids is because I don't know if you know this, but my child is two years old and the height of a five-year-old. She is growing at such a rapid pace that I need a mattress that's gonna keep up with her growth. And one of the things that I love about the Helix Kids mattress feature is a two-sided design created with kids' developmental and comfort needs in mind. So one side of the mattress is firmer and it's to aid in their growth and development with their spine and things like that. And then the other side is softer, which is a lot more comfortable for older kids. Helix Kids mattresses are made without harmful chemicals and have undergone extensive lead testing to ensure little sleeper safety. Because I don't know if you guys know this, there are other kids products just in general that have a lot of unsafe chemicals and I'm really grateful to Helix Kids that, that they are very cognizant and careful about what they put in their products for kids. The mattress features a hypoallergenic cover that resists allergens that can cause irritation or allergic reactions as well as an eco-friendly and plant-based durable water resistant finish that is both stain and water repellent because Helix knows that accidents can happen and there's nothing worse than being unable to clean up a mess on a child's mattress. Trust me, I made that mistake before, but after finding Helix Kids, I've been good since then. The mattress also features a microbe shield which combats odor, causing bacteria to maintain hygiene, making it one of the best mattresses on the market to hold up against kids and pets. The Helix Kids mattress has been tested and approved by medical doctors, sleep consultants, child behavioral specialists, and most importantly, real parents and real kids. Helix Kids mattress was even named best overall kids mattress by today's parents. And listen, I know it might be a little nerve wracking buying something that you've never used before. Helix has a 100 night sleep trial so you get more than three months to make sure that your kids actually love their mattress plus helix mattress have a 10-year warranty and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plan thank you so much to helix sleep for sponsoring today's video and you can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com to get 20 percent off your helix kids mattress i want to start off by saying that while yes we are from two different cultures and obviously an interracial couple both of our cultures are very traditional very collectivistic very much family oriented and these were things that were very important to us when we first dated and i think what really works for us as a couple and as a family is to focus on what makes us similar and then celebrate the differences in our culture versus demonizing them because i feel like it's so easy to look at another group of people and just be like i don't like that you do that and it's not for me and criticize them versus experiencing it appreciating it or if it's not for you it doesn't have to be something that's negative just be like hey that's their thing doesn't mean that it has to be for me and i think if people developed more of that mentality there'll be a lot less ignorant and a lot less hate the first thing that i really want to talk about is the importance of language 
my first language, my mother tongue is Swahili and that's what we primarily speak in Tanzania. And Dan speaks Serbian. Obviously language is very important in culture. It's the very, in my opinion, it's the very core of a culture. And I personally feel like if you learn a language, you learn about the people, you learn about the soul of that group of people. So a lot of you had questions on how we're teaching her our different languages because Serbian and Swahili are very very different and to boil it down to make it super easy I speak to her predominantly in Swahili and he speaks to her in Serbian. What I personally love to do is to associate things or activities with our respective languages. <laughs> Jedna kašika. Dobra, ja uzmi kaš. Ja to ti će vidiške. A, a ti kaš. Ajde. Druga kašika. Peta kašika. Šesta kašika. Ajde, povuci joj. Fioku, polako. Dođi što sam. Dođi što sam, ako da vidiš. When I tell you this is our everyday life, this is our everyday life, this is our norm, we speak to her in our respective languages while associating them with tasks because we find that it sticks and she's able to speak and understand whether we're disciplining her, whether we're telling her to do something, we make sure we do it in our respective languages. Also, Dan and I literally argue with each other in our respective languages. Sometimes it's hilarious because I will be yelling at him in Swahili and he'll be yelling at me in Serbian and it's just honestly hilarious because sometimes we don't even know what the other person Person is saying but it just makes sense to the both of us also while we are speaking our respective languages to her we are cognizant of keeping a balance My yes, ma my yai. My ma ma yai. Yai. My yai. My yai. Yeah, tano no batano. Your yo. Okay, you didn't have to repeat that. Dai, dai, mama, dai, dai, dai. Yeti sabi ki yai. Ano bos subiri kilogo. Subiri kilogo. Ano bos subiri. I think part of the reason why I'm really hitting it home that language is very important because I believe that language is a map of the people who have come before you and she comes from two very rich cultures that date back thousands and thousands of years. Nani anapika, ina anapika, nani anapika. And I just think it's very important for her to know the languages of her people. Also, on a little bit more of a surface level, yeah, I think it would be so much fun to kiki and gossip about people in Serbian and Swahili and not have people understand us. And also, her being able to roast people in other languages will kind of be like a badge of honor. Is that petty of me? Hi, welcome to Dani. Welcome to Nesani. I twig him cotton, mama. Sometimes it honestly feels so frustrating when she doesn't get something right away and I have to consciously remind myself like one, she's a toddler and that over time she's going to get it especially if I'm speaking to her in my respective language in Swahili all the time like she's gonna get it. It's literally so interesting to watch her learn these things because even if she doesn't understand something the first time, the second time, the third time, she'll end up getting it the fourth time out of nowhere and it just sticks which is why I'm like let's be patient it doesn't have to happen right away also when it comes to language I find that allowing her to watch cartoon in our respective languages really really helps she watches cartoons mostly in Swahili and Serbian and because English is all around her she picks it up 
quite easily like Dan and I will speak to each other in English so she picks it up also I love Miss Rachel so she'll watch Miss Rachel and not only is she learning English from Miss Rachel but she's also learning ASL but it's actually really cool that she's picking up another way of communicating another way that she's been learning language is through cultural immersion a couple months ago we've been in Serbia for two months and when I tell you at this point she mostly speaks Serbian it's because of those two months also we have a plan to go home to Tanzania so she will be picking up a lot more Swahili then this is also how I learn Serbian through cultural immersion every single year that we come here I learn more and more but that's because it's around me 24 7 when I'm in Serbia it's a lot easier for me to pick up than listening to Dan speak to me another aspect of our cultures that's very important is food y'all know this about me I am crazy I am insane about the food in Serbia one because it's fresh two because it tastes good and three it's full of flavor now back home in Tanzania our food is very much fresh our food is very flavorful and I find that although that Serbian culture doesn't have the same flavor profile I love foods that are very rich in culture and flavorful here in Serbia and in Tanzania people come together over food whether it's someone coming over and you're hosting them or literally as you're cooking food has a way of bringing people together and we make it a point to feed her food from both of our cultures <laughs> You know, back in my day, your grandma never told me bravo. Why the way that we were all cutting up and laughing and just shooting the shit if you will while my mom was cooking ugali and i'm choosy which is ugali and meat sauce I, we were just having so much fun telling funny stories and anecdotes. Also, the way that my mom is mixing up the sugali, she's obviously a professional. She's been here before and she knows what she's doing, but when I tried to do it, my ancestors were looking down at me and going, what the heck? Where did we go wrong? Ah! So wait, oh, is it like back? So it's like this? Why are you laughing at me? Wait, how do you do this? Because the way that you... I don't know why you're laughing. You are you do it. I also can't stand mom's laugh. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God
whether it's sarma, whether it's chivapi, whether it's, oh my God, how many other foods are in Serbia? So many, I can't even remember all of it. Whatever it is, we make sure to, I don't, I don't wanna say increase her flavor profile, that sounds weird, but we want to diversify her palette because our foods, although some of it may be different, it is a part of our cultures and we want her to have that feel. I remember growing up when I would want McDonald's all the time and I'd want American based food and my mom would be like, we got rice and beans at home and I would be so salty. I would be so upset. But now as an adult, I appreciate food from back home a lot more. When my mom is making ugali, nyama nam chuzi, or pilau, I I just have such an appreciation for that food and it makes me feel so much at home when I am eating that food even in the States or even when Dan prepares Serbian food in the States it makes me feel like I'm in Serbia again it just feels like I'm connected and we want her to feel that way especially with her being born and living in the States we don't want her to forget her places of origin last but very much not least music is so 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 important when it comes to culture i love dancing i love music and although i'm not like a boom cat boom cat cat kind of dancer i don't know all the latest moves but what i do know is how to feel music and that is so important when it comes to culture here in serbia there's a lot of like folklore folk music the beat is different the rhythm is different and yet when i am dancing folklore well the simple the simple version of folklore because i am not a master yet i feel so connected to the people here and that's what we want for her it's a part of her culture it's a part of her history it's a part of her identity and even back home in tanzania there's a difference in the beat there's a difference in the rhythm the way that you move and the way that you connect with the music i have danced with people that i don't even know but we are connected through music if that makes sense we also just want her to be able to i don't know how to explain it because it sounds so weird but the way that i connect with people through dance is amazing it's just a way to come together with someone i just feel like it sounds so weird so with her we play all kinds of music but we also make sure to play music from our respective places i think something that i have not touched on is the fact that while yes i'm from tanzania i actually grew up mostly in the states tanzanian culture and black american culture are different and there are certain aspects of african-american culture black culture that i picked up growing up and that's actually something that's been so interesting number one teaching dayan and two incorporating in our household because for me it is a way of life it's a part of who i am but even when i was back home in tanzania or when i speak to my aunts i just realize how different sometimes our cultures are or our way of being like while i grew up listening to tanzanian songs i was also watching bet grew up listening to destiny's childs tony braxton all the things you know and so it's just so interesting incorporating that part of my culture into our household and it's not hard at all because again even in black culture we have our own language there's a certain things that we do in terms of style it's just a way of life we are also engaging with that aspect of my culture our culture now so it's just quite um the dynamic in our household and i'm just now realizing how crazy it is that we have so many different moving parts but somehow it just all comes together and it's honestly not that hard and i think because i have a partner who is not critical of my culture and is very interested in who i am as a person and that means my identity and i have so many different identities and he's so invested in me and learning about who i am and different various parts of my cultures that it just is so easy that i don't have to over explain myself and i think when you have a partner who is interested in you and interested in your culture it's not that hard and the same that goes with me i literally learned a whole other language i have literally learned a different way of life and i have incorporated different parts of his culture in our life and the thing is we don't have to ask each other to do these things we just do them why because 
we are important to each other. We also realize that our child's identity is also connected to their culture. And so we make the effort and again, it's not hard. I had you guys ask me a couple questions on Instagram about our culture in general and just our overall dynamic. What are challenges that come with immersing your child in both cultures? I feel as if the difficult part is not the fact that she comes from several different cultures or rather that several different cultures form her identity. I think it's building her confidence within those different aspects of her culture because not only is she Tanzanian, not only is she Serbian, she will be growing up in black culture as well within the States. And again, there's just so many different aspects of that and I just want her to be able to have that confidence wherever she goes. I don't want her to feel left out when it comes to Serbian culture. I don't want her to feel left out when she goes back home to Tanzania and she can't fully immerse herself in that culture. And I also don't want her to feel left out when it comes to other aspects of like black culture and stuff like that. So just building her confidence within herself, within her identity and within her cultural values. Someone asked, how do you balance core values and beliefs from each culture and pass it on to Irina? I feel like both of us come from very similar cultures and I don't think I told you guys this, but when Dan and I were dating, I decided like we need to have a talk about how is it that we want to raise our family? How is it that we want to go about things as a couple, as a married couple? Where do we stand? And being family oriented and being very collectivistic is what we focused on and what we agreed on. And so because we come from similar backgrounds where certain core values and beliefs are very much the same, we didn't struggle with that. Do you ever feel your child gravitated more towards one culture over another? Honestly, no. In terms of language, yes, she's speaking more Serbian, but again, she spent two months here in Serbia. I feel like she's very much well balanced other than that. like. I just don't know how to explain it. It just works, I think, because we constantly expose her to different aspects of our culture. And I don't feel like she's leaning more towards one culture for now. We'll obviously have to see as she grows up. Hopefully, she can equally identify with her cultures overall. How do you master balancing raising a mixed kid? Honestly, this is something that we are working on still because not only is she biracial, she's multicultural. So that is something that is a topic of discussion constantly within our household. Unfortunately, there are certain aspects in cultures like racism that still exist, but we are very keen and very big on educating not only her, but also each other in terms of our like the history within our cultures. Dan and I are constantly having conversation about race and my experiences. And we are also very cognizant of the fact that yes, she is half black and half white. She is mixed race. And there are certain conversations that we are gonna have to have with her. And so we are doing the research and talking to other people who are not only multicultural, but multiracial about their experiences. So that way we are doing our due diligence as parents and raising her in a way that is loving, caring, and building up again her confidence and the self-love and self-respect. We're still a work in progress, like we're still learning. We don't know everything, but I think when you build up the confidence in your kids and continuously not only educate them, but educate yourself, that's the only thing you can do. Also, making sure your kids have a diverse friend group and not kids of one culture or one just way of life, I think is very, very helpful. Our goal is to make sure that she's balanced overall as a person. How do you balance gender roles and culture? See, although Dan and I come from very traditional cultures, we are not a very traditional couple. We tend to do what needs to be done in the sense that if there's a day where he's working all day, I will cook, I will clean. And if there's a day where I am busy, I am working, he will cook, 
he will clean. We do not fall back on our very traditional cultural values because one, it's a different day and age. We believe that marriage is a partnership and there's a give and there's a take and there's so many moving pieces. You just have to do what is best for you and your relationship. And that's how we want to raise Irina as well. We want her to obviously learn how to cook and clean but not because it's what a woman does or what a girl does but because you need to learn how to feed yourself. Hygiene is very important and if we had a son we would teach him the same thing Learning to do things doesn't have to fall within gender roles rather What needs to be done if that makes sense? I hope this video was helpful Thank you so much for watching today's video and also thank you so much to helix kids for sponsoring today's video Irina loves her helix kids mattress if you're looking for a new mattress for your kid make sure to check out helix sleep you can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com to get 20 percent off your helix kids mattress again thank you so much to helix sleep and thank you so much for watching today's video bye